Hey everyone, I'm Sanket Singh. I'm working as a software engineer at Google and welcome back to my channel. So guys, in today's video, I'm going to talk about a very important thing. Uh, this is something that I used to tell a lot of students of mine, right? And this is something that I myself also implemented when I was learning some very foundations of computer science like data structures and algorithms, right? I'm going to talk about like, are you not learning the algorithms the right way, right? And if, if that's correct, then what is my opinion on the fact that how one should go forward with uh, algorithms, right? So, uh, this is something that I'm, I wanted to talk about for, from a very long time and I believe that this video is going to cover a lot about that. This is not going to be a very long video. I will try to keep everything concise. So make sure you watch till the very end and if you enjoy the video then don't forget to uh, hit the subscribe button and hit that bell icon so that you never miss a notification whenever I'm going to put a new video on the channel. So without any further delay, let's just start. So guys, in this video, I'm going to take three examples, three examples of three different algorithmic paradigms and different algorithmic scenarios. And using these uh, examples, I'm going to talk about that, what people used to do generally uh, when they uh, learn these algorithms and what is my opinion and what is the correct way and I, what is something that I also used to impart to my students when I used to teach them uh, all these algorithms, right? So the first algorithm that we are going to talk about is heap sort, right? So you will find a lot of people learning about heap sort. You'll find a lot of articles on heap sort, medium articles and all. Then you will be finding the fact that whenever there is a discussion on heap sort, what people do is they have the problem statement that you have to sort the array, right? And then they directly start the implementation of heap sort that, okay, you can take a heap and uh, you can one by one, one by one, take the biggest element from the heap and then put it at the last of the array and so on and so forth, right? You'll find a lot of people when you will ask them that what is heap sort, they will you like directly start telling you that what is the algorithm of heap sort? And that makes sense, right? If you are asked the algorithm, you should know the algorithm. But in order to understand the algorithm, there can be different ways also, right? Because at the last, there are n number of algorithms and you can't memorize everything. Like this is more or less like memorizing everything. Now ju you just think about one thing that you know about selection sort, right? There is an algorithm called a selection sort. What selection sort does is it divides your array into two parts, right? The first half is the sorted part. And in the later half, what it does is, is it tries to get the minimum from the later half extract the minimum and then put it at the last of the sorted region, right? This is uh, selection sort. Okay. Now, in order to get the minimum, in order to get the minimum, what selection sort does is it does a linear search kind of a thing, right? Okay. You can implement selection sort the other way also that one by one, you can keep the sorted part at the last and unsorted part in the uh, initials and then one by one, one by one, do linear search in the unsorted region and this time get the maximum, right? So you, both of the things can be done for selection sort. Now, if you will carefully see what is the problem with selection sort, in order to get the minimum or the maximum, whatever way you implement the selection sort, you are using linear search in an unsorted region. Now, just think about it. If you want to search, a, search an element uh, in an unsorted region, what can you do better than linear search? We can't apply binary search there, right? So the better way to get minimum from a region is obviously heap. So this linear search part of the heap sort, uh, sorry, the selection sort, if you just replace this linear search part with a heap, you got heap sort, right? And heap sort is just that. You can implement heap sort as a, in also both the ways, right? And if you will carefully analyze the fact that then heap sort is just an optimization over selection sort, right? Obviously, I didn't came up, uh, didn't come up with this intuition from the, for the very first time when I was uh, learning heap sort. But definitely, I uh, tried to put in a lot of efforts. I gave a lot of time to the, all the algorithm. I used to revise them one by one, one by one. And then later, I realized that all the algorithm, most of the algorithms, are going to have a lot of correlation among them, right? And I believe if this is something that everyone teaches us that, okay, you know already selection sort. One algorithm you already learned, one whole data structure you already learned. Now, if you want to learn this new algorithm heap sort, just take the selection sort, take the heap data structure, replace linear search with heap, and that's it, right? You can get the minimum of heap and you will be able to implement uh, heap sort. So yeah, this was the first example that I, would I wanted to give you guys that how you can learn heap sort in a better way. Before moving forward, I would like to thank the sponsor of this video that is Geeks for Geeks. So Geeks for Geeks is coming with one of the most exciting event that is the Resolution Days 2022 starting from 7th of January till 9th of January. 
During this event, you can find tons and tons of free resources using which you can learn a lot of topics of computer science including data structures, algorithms, competitive programming, etc. You can even get a site-wide discount of 15% on all of the GFG courses, including a lot of free webinars, including topics like front-end development, data science, web development and machine learning, Python, etc. You can even have some resolution of maybe learning DSA or maybe learning competitive programming or maybe getting into product-based companies. You can find the corresponding roadmaps and even test your skills around DSA, C++, Java during this event. There are events like Wheel of Fortune where you can get even heavier discounts on the, all the courses of GFG. And apart from that, there is a stall of the day where you can get two of the courses per day at even heavier discounts. All of these resources are available on the Resolution Days 2022. So you can find the link in the description section so that you can check out all of these opportunities. And I would highly recommend you guys to check out the page of GFG so that you can grab all of these tests and webinars and start your coding journey with GFG. The second algorithm that I'm going to talk about is Merge Sort. Now there is no gap uh, in the learning of Merge Sort of most of the students. Most of the students know that what is Merge Sort, how exactly Merge Sort works, right? So this is a story when I was working uh, at uh, Interview Bit. Uh, we also used to take a lot of interviews for a lot of educators and a lot of software engineers, right? And this was one question that we used to ask to a lot of candidates, right? And I felt the fact that this one question 99% of the candidates, irrespective of the fact, whatever level of DSA they have learned, 99% of the time people used to stumble on this question that, okay, you know what is merge sort. Merge sort divides your array into two equal halves, right? You sort the left half, you sort the right half, and you use the merge uh, subroutine or the merge algorithm to merge the both the arrays. And that makes sense, right? Now, don't you think that it's a relevant question to ask that why only two equal halves? Why not three equal halves or why not four equal halves, right? You will find a lot of students just wrote learning merge sort that, okay, you divide that into two parts, recursively left, recursively right, so on and so forth. But, but most of the people never even ask a question that who told us that dividing into two sub, sub parts or two sub arrays is going to be the best thing, right? Like, do we have some analysis on that? If not, then why we are considering this? So this is something that is really important. And if you will carefully analyze a lot of implementation of a lot of data structures and algorithms rotates around this uh, factor of two, like segmentary. Segmentary is a binary tree. Why not segmentary is a ternary tree? Heap. Heap is a binary tree. Why not heap is a ternary tree, right? Or a quaternary tree. Think about this, right? You have binary search and ternary search, but still binary search is better. Why? So these are some questions that should tickle your mind, right? And I believe if you will start asking these kind of questions, if you will analyze algorithms in this way, then a lot of foundational concepts will be clear and you will be having a very firm foundation of data structures and algorithms. The third example I'm going to take is from some advanced algorithms and data structures. So a lot of times you will find people are saying that dynamic programming is quite tough, right? I made a dedicated video that what are some important observations that you can make while learning dynamic programming. I'll drop the link uh, in the cards, right? So in that video also, I discussed about the same thing that dynamic in dynamic programming, most of the time, every question is not new. There are certain set of patterns that people need to follow, right? And this is even given, uh, this is even given in books like CP3, Corman, etc. In CP3, you will see that there are like one algorithm uh, mentioned, let's say minimum coin change and like almost 50 questions or 60, 80 questions on the same pattern of minimum coin change. Then traveling salesman problem, 50, 80 questions on TSP that is using DP with bit mass, right? So most of the time what happens is in the basic to medium level algorithms for DP, most of the questions are either repeated or are like some optimization or some, I would say deviation from the basic questions like minimum uh, coin change, knapsack, traveling salesman problem, matrix chain multiplication, Fibonacci, etc. right? Apart from that, uh, if you will see people learning advanced uh, uh, data structures like segmentary, then a lot of people just make the size of the segmentary as 4n, right? If you'll ask them that, okay, why you are making the size of the segmentary 4n, they'll say that, okay, it is required. You will find it in the implementation, but people don't never like try to bother that why 4n, like how this figure of 4n came up. Is there any mathematical proof for that? Is there any observatory proof for that or what it is, right? So this is the gap that I'm talking about, right? People are learning algorithms. They're not understanding or they, I believe they don't want to understand algorithms. People are nowadays like, they just want to solve lead code or like any interview preparation track. And in order to do that, they just learn algorithms and try solving questions. 
but instead they are not understanding there are a lot of good tutorials i already made a video a dedicated video on some very good free youtube channels that are trying to solve this problem they are trying to give you intuition right all of these problem all the three use cases that i just told you all of these three use cases can be solved by only one thing try to learn algorithms mathematically or intuitively i know that a lot of time very uh, hard mathematical proofs might not be understandable for a, a newbie or for someone who is just at an intermediate level for example if you will see a lot of greedy proofs then people find a lot of difficulty in understanding how exactly greedy algorithms are working but still you can find some intuitive proofs for all of these uh, greedy algorithms so try to use either mathematics or your intuition to understand the algorithm rather than just rote learning the algorithm or rote learning the step that okay how can dance work how knapsack works instead try to understand see i'm just going to tell you one thing that in knapsack minimum coin all these coin change problems and all everything is a pick not pick strategy and where this pick not pick strategy comes from the subsets right we learned in the subsets that uh, the total number of subset for a given set is 2 raised to the power n this is coming from permutation combination where every element can be either chosen for the subset or not chosen so this simple technique is applied in subset some problem knapsack problem coin chain a lot of problems are there right even a lot of dp with bit masking problems are also revolving around this right so try to get intuition of the problem this is the only thing that i wanted to say the more intuitively you will learn and the more story you will build that okay i learned one algorithm and this uh, this algorithm is quite similar to that so i don't need to learn the complete new algorithm i already know one algorithm i just need to know what optimizations can i do right this is very important in your learning journey right i know people can have different opinions on that uh, and i totally uh, appreciate if you have even a better way of learning right but i believe uh, the due to the fact that people just learn algorithms there is a significant gap on what they should know and what they actually know right solving a question doesn't explain the fact that you are going to be a very good software engineer and you guys already know about this right being a software engineer you should be someone who knows the corner cases of everything right who is able to uh, explore the thing in a very uh, good fashion who is able to take out a lot of cases that okay what if this happens what if this happens right so this is something that should be the attitude of a i would say budding software engineer so yeah uh, that was it uh, in today's video right this was something that i wanted to discuss from a long time and i made a video on that and if you enjoyed the video then don't forget to hit the like button and uh, drop your comments on what are your thoughts do you feel that the examples that i gave were relevant enough and were you able to connect with that okay are these algorithms or let, let's say can these algorithms can be learned in this way also and i would i would be reading all the comments so don't forget to drop your thoughts in the comment section and we will meet in the next video till then take care guys bye bye have a great week ahead and love you all